Yeah, well, it's Joe, uh, here with another episode of Comic Book Day, and, uh, like always, I'm showing you what comics I bought this week, and, uh, kind of talking about everything, and let's get started. <laughs> I don't know how to begin this thing ever, really, it's, you know, you know what the show is, it's been enough episodes. This is Daredevil, number 22. Uh, yeah, I love Daredevil, so I'm really excited to, you know, see where this is going. Uh, last time, last issue ended with Daredevil on, on the, the stand in some trial. Uh, there it's, you know, the cover's him taking, you know, the, I don't know, the oath that you have to take before. I really don't know. Does that have an official title? The oath, the oath that you take when you, you know, go to testify and swear in a Bible and stuff? Uh, yeah, Matt Murdock's trying to take down all crime. Somehow that's going to involve Daredevil testifying for him. So, I don't know. We'll see. This is All-Star Batman, number 11. Uh, I'm excited to see this. This is the second part of, um, I think it's called The First Ally. Yeah. Uh, this is somehow tied into, like, Alfred's kind of backstory uh, when he was younger. Uh, like, way younger from what the first... Uh, part of this showed. So yeah, I'm excited to see how that's going to tie in. And uh, yeah, I like any kind of Alfred story, definitely. So oh, here's some of the art from uh, All-Star Batman number 11. All-Star Batman has been pretty cool with the art because um, not every issue, but lots of every couple issues and every kind of different story uh, has had a different artist, at least the work of different artists in there a lot. Um, so yeah, you really get a lot of different range of, uh, you know, all the different art that's in, you know, even issue to issue. I mean, this story has had the same artist. I think actually he's been working with the same one for at least the past, uh, two or three issues. Um, but yeah, I really like the art, uh, in this, and it's always kind of this, I don't know, it's always somewhat similar. I mean, they've had jock work on here uh which is an artist that i really really like he works with zack or zack snyder ugh, uh scott snyder a lot um so yeah i like when jock is on there he does the covers lots of times too um but they it's really been a lot of great artists the whole time and then at the end usually there's kind of this other story uh kind of little mini story that's going on and you usually get a whole different set of art uh, for these little stories. So it's really cool the way, you know, it works out that you get a lot of different art in this book. Uh, it's usually a really good looking book. And uh, this just entirely is one of the best DC books, I think, right now. This is Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, number one. Uh, this is a brand new series that kind of gets... It, at least it promises to get Peter Parker, uh, you know, Spider-Man back to a more simple, kind of, you know, his simpler roots. Uh, Spider-Man has been the head of a multi-million, multi-billion dollar corporation now for the past, I don't know, a year. Uh, but this is more kind of like street-level Spider-Man again. Uh, so I'm really excited to see this, because I haven't really liked where Spider-Man's been going. At least, you know, the Peter Parker Spider-Man. So yeah, hopefully this is kind of, you know, what it promises to be, and it's more kind of classic Spider-Man stuff. This is Batman number 25. Uh, this issue kicks off the, um, the War of Jokes and Riddles. Uh, yeah, it's also an exercise anniversary issue. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to see this. It's going to be Riddler versus the Joker. Uh, it seems like a pretty, you know, awesome combination of Batman villains fighting. Uh, that was always kind of the top villains I could imagine fighting, you know, as a kid reading Batman and watching Batman stuff. So yeah, I'm excited to see it finally kind of happen. This is Steve Rogers, Captain America, number 18. Uh, looks like this is him versus Namer. Uh, which already some stuff has happened in Secret Empire and uh, the Secret Empire Brave New World. Uh, that kind of focused on Namor some. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if this is going to be set before those stories or not. Hopefully it it isn't. 
because uh, I don't really want to read something that, you know, I know the ultimate end story because it happened at the end of Secret Empire number four. Uh, but it might be what's going on because that's, you know, Namer popped up right at the end there, kind of resolved stuff. This is Luke Cage number two. I am very excited to read this one also. Uh, I like the first issue of a lot. It's going back to kind of Luke Cage's origin, and he's you know got a mystery involving the scientists that helped him get his powers. Uh, so it seems like there's going to be maybe a lot more people uh, with you know Luke's kind of powers, and they they have bullets that can hurt Luke and uh, pierce his skin and stuff. Come some kind of special bullet. So yeah, it'll be exciting to see. This is Royal City number four. Uh, this comic continues to be very, very good. Uh, it's one of my favorite comics right now. And uh, yeah, I really, I like the artwork of it a lot. I like the weird style, um, you know, this story. Uh, it's about this family who, the first, the, the father has a stroke. And then after that, it's kind of revealed that all the members of this family kind of see the ghost of this one uh, brother, kind of in a different way. They're all a different age for him. For he's a different age for each different person, and he's doing different things. You know, it's it's how they, I guess, best kind of imagine him. Because um, his sister sees him as a little kid again, still, so she can kind of help take care of him. Whereas everyone else kind of sees him as you know their person to kind of hang out and talk to a lot more. This is X-Files Origins, Dog Days of Summer, number one. Uh, this covers, this is a really sweet comic. I missed X-Files Origins, uh, the first volume. I don't know, I don't even remember seeing it in uh, stores, really. Um, so I don't know if they did this. Probably they did this the first time around. You know, this is a story that is, it's when Mulder and Scully are both kids, so it's way long before they were in the X-Files, and it's just, you know, weird things happening to them. What kind of made them into, I think, people who wanted to go join, you know, the, the FBI. And what's really cool about this is that you flip it over, and you've got, you know, this is Scully's story now. So half of this is all about Mulder, the other half Scully. And I like how they have this, you know, kind of flip around, and then you see... At first, when I was flipping through this, I was like, oh, this is a really short comic just filled with ads, I guess. Uh, but now the rest of it is flipped around the other way. So, yeah, I like how they did it that way, and I'm excited to see this. I wanted to read the first Orig X-Files Origins, um, but, yeah, like I said, I completely missed that. So, you know, with summer starting, this is a summer story. I thought it would be a good idea. Today's even the, the first day of summer as I'm recording this and as these comics came out, so... Very appropriate. Well, let's take a look at some of the artwork here in uh, X-Files Origins. Uh, you've got two different kind of stories, and I'm pretty sure they have two different kind of styles of artwork. Um, but here in Mulder's, you really have this very, very cartoonish uh, kind of drawing. And I, I kind of like it, you know, especially since it's like an old set-in-the-past story. You know, it's not like it needs to be too gritty or cool. It's a young teenage molder. So, yeah, I like the the look of this. And then flip around to the other side for Scully's story. I think Scully, she looks older than Mulder, definitely on the cover. Um, but yeah, you've got a little different kind of style artwork here. Uh, not quite as cartoonish. It's still kind of far. Wow, that really looks a lot like a close-up of Jillian Anderson almost. I don't know, maybe I just think that. But I think that looks a lot like Scully right there. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm really excited to check this out. I like how they have the two different kind of art styles. Uh, I don't know, probably, you know, they have two different artists. Um, but they might actually... Oh, it looks like maybe they switch writing duties and drawing duties. But I don't know. I don't know for sure, looking at the name there. Um, but yeah, I like the look of this one a lot. And this is Secret Empire Underground number one. Um, I'm pretty sure this is just a one-shot kind of thing. Just like they had, um... Oh shoot, now I can't even remember. Uprising. Secret Empire Uprising. Uh, that one was all about Black Widow and the Red Room and the, uh, 
younger uh, superheroes. This one is about the uh, the underground, obviously the the resistance to Captain America. And I don't know completely what this is about. Uh, it might be part of the them trying to find the um, cosmic cube fragments. I don't know. It might be a completely different kind of. You know, they're looking for some kind of big weapon down in the Savage Land, uh, where I don't know it's the past. <laughs> I don't. I don't know much about the Savage Land. I know some about. It. X-Men, you know, but I know nothing about the Savage Land, really. It's an X-Men thing. That's all I know. And, yeah, those are all my comics from this week. So, uh, thanks for watching, and as always, make sure to go through, watch all of our videos. Well, you don't have to watch all of them, I guess, but watch whatever ones you think you'd like. And, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and make sure to come back next week, because we'll have another episode. Thanks.